The Vulva Club. I have always been obsessed with naming things. If I could name them, I could know them. If I could name them, I could tame them. They could be my friends. For example, I had a large collection of frogs when I was a little girl. Stuffed frogs, china frogs, plastic frogs, neon frogs, happy battery operated frogs. Each one had a name. I took time to know them for a while before I named them. I sat them on the, my bed and watched them in the daylight, wear them in my coat pocket, hold them in my sweaty little hands. I came to know them by their texture, their smell, their shape, their size, their sense of humor. <laughs> then they would get named, usually in a splendid naming ceremony. Surrounding them with their frog friends, I would dress them in ceremonial coats, put sparkles on them or gold stars, stand them in front of the frog chapel and name them. <laughs> <laughs> I eventually named the parts of my body, my hands, Gladys. They seemed functional and basic, like Gladys. I named my shoulders Shorty, strong and a little belligerent. My breasts were Betty. They weren't Veronica, but they weren't <laughs> ugly either. <laughs> Naming my down there was not so easy. It wasn't the same as naming my hands. No, it was complicated. Down there was alive, not so easy to pinpoint. It remained unnamed, and as unnamed, it remained untamed, unknown. We had a babysitter around then, Sarah Stanley. She talked in this high-pitched voice that made me pee. <laughs> when I was taking a bath one night, she told me to be sure to wash my itsy bitsy. I can't say that I liked this name. It took a while to even figure out what it was, but there was something about her voice. The name stuck. Yes, there it is, my itsy bitsy. <laughs> Unfortunately, this name followed me into adulthood. On our first night in bed, I informed the man I would later marry that my itsy bitsy was a little shy, a butt eager, and if he would be patient, she would surely reveal her mysteries. He was a little freaked out, I think, uh, but as is his nature, he went along with it and later would actually call her by her name. Is it Bitsy there? <laughs> is she ready? I myself was never happy with her name, so what happened later is really not surprising. One night, my husband and I were in the act. He called out to her, come here, my little Itsy Bitsy, and she did not respond. <laughs> it was this she suddenly wasn't there. Itsy bitsy, it's me, your biggest fan. <laughs> no word, <laughs> no motion, so I called to her. Itsy bitsy, come on out! Don't do this to me! <laughs> not a word, not a sound. Itsy was dead, then mute, then gone. Itsy bitsy! <laughs> For days, she did not come, then weeks, then months, I became despondent. I reluctantly told my friend Teresa, who was spending all her time in this new women's group. I said, Itsy Bitsy will not speak to me, Teresa. She won't return my calls. Who is Itsy Bitsy? <laughs> my Bitsy, I said. Uh, my Itsy. What are you talking about? She said in a voice that suddenly sounded much deeper than mine. <laughs> you mean your vulva, girl? Vulva? I said to Teresa. What exactly is that? It's the package, she said. It's the entire deal. Vulva. Vulva. <laughs> I could feel something unlock. Itsy Bitsy was wrong. I knew this all along. I could not see Itsy Bitsy. I never knew who or what she was, and she did not sound like an opening or a lip. That night, we named her, my husband Randy and I, just like the frogs, dressed her in sparkles and sexy clothes, put her in front of the body chapel lit candles. At first, we whispered it, Boba. <laughs> softly to see if she'd hear. Boba, Boba, are you there? There was sweetness and some 
something definitely stirred. Vulva. Vulva, are you real? And we sang the vulva song, which didn't involve croaking, but kissing. And we danced the vulva dance, which didn't involve hopping, but leaping. And all the other body parts were lined up, Betty and Gladys and Shorty, and they were definitely listening. <laughs>